around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with the U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, the United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> Good evening, John. Oh, Miss Russell. Good evening. Hello, Chester. Oh, oh Miss Kitty. Why are you sitting over here all by yourself? Oh, it's my new boots. I just could not stand on my feet another minute. New boots? Yeah. Oh, hey, they're mighty good looking, Chester. Yeah, but I'll be thankful when they feel as good as you look. <laughs> uh, here's your coffee, Chester. Oh, my, I sure do thank you, Sam. Waiting on me hand and foot this way? <laughs> well, it ain't every day that you get new boots, Chester. You sure ain't that bad. <laughs> oh, look. The man at the door. What do you mean? <sighs> good heavens. His face? Yeah. I did. Hey, you. He means you, Sam. Say, look, maybe I better go get Mr. Dillon. I want to talk to you. Well, I guess I... I better go see what he wants. Mm -hmm. What is it, mister? Can I get some food here? The store is closed. You put it in this bag, I'll take it with me. Well, uh... Okay, okay, mister. Charlie, yeah. put, put some bread and meat and some ground coffee in this bag right away. Okay, Sam. The food will be right out, mister. Thank you. He just wanted something to eat, Kitty. I know. Sam, I... I can't bear to look at him. Well, maybe he'll leave when Charlie brings him food. I hope so, Sam. I really do. It'll be 35 cents, mister. Oh. Thank you. Yeah, he, he's leaving now, Kitty. Sam, I need a drink. Oh, me too. I, I never seen nothing so frightful ugly in all my life. Mm. I don't know where he come from, but I'll tell you boys one thing. That critter ain't you. Matt? Uh, hello, Kitty. Sam? Uh, Kitty, you... There was a ghost. What's going on here? Or didn't Chester tell you? Tell me what? I haven't seen Chester. A uh, man was just in here, Matt. A man with a face that was... Oh. Horrible. Well, there are some faces still here that won't take any prizes, you know. Oh, no, it's, it's no joke, Marshal. This was worse than anything I ever seen. That's true, Marshal. Well, what'd this fella do? Nothing. He just bought some food and left us all. Marshal Dillon. Yeah, what is it, Frisbee? If you want some help to run that critter down, me and the boys are ready. Now, wait just a minute. As I get it, an ugly man walked in here and bought some food and left, and that's all. He was more animal than man, Marshal. Ask anybody. Now, hold it! Now, we don't arrest people around here for the shape of their faces. Matt, it wasn't a face. No, he was all twisted and slick-looking, like tallow that had commenced to melt. You mark my words. You leave that critter run loose in this territory, and you'll have trouble. Mr. Dillon? 
Mr. Dillon. Yeah, what is it, Chester? That ugly-looking man, he's after Doc. What? Yes, sir, I seen him. There was a light in Doc's office, and that man was sneaking up, and when he seen me, he busted right in on Doc. Well, Marshal... You stay out of this. All of you. I'll handle it. You see what I mean, Doctor? Yes, just tilt your head back a little more, Bruno. My, my, that's unbelievable. Doc, uh, you all right? Well, of course I'm all right. Now, why wouldn't I be? Come in, come in. Oh, this is Bruno Thayer, Matt. Matt Dillon's the marshal here. How do you do, Marshal? I'm glad to meet you there. Uh, Bruno, you're going to have that pain no matter what. Mm. I figured that, Doctor. Uh, now, when it gets to bearing down, we'll use hot packs and hold hot salt water in your mouth. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's about all I can tell you. You can just put your shirt back on. Uh... How much do I owe you, Doc? Oh, nothing. Nothing. Uh... <clears throat> When Bruno was 16, Matt, he, he tried to outrun a buffalo stampede and his horse fell. Oh? Yeah. They run right over me, Marshal. Well, I better get going. Uh, he's going to take over the old Jenks farm, Matt. Oh, that's so? Well, I'm going to try it. Uh, how old are you now, Bruno? I guess I'm 26, Marshal. It's a year or two I don't remember much about. It's a miracle you lived at all. It was a bad bargain, Doc. Oh, no, and I don't say Doc, that. Doc, with a face like this, would you want to live? Would you, Marshal? My horse and my dog, the only ones don't care what I look like. Sure, Doc, but I'm not sure that I would want to live. Now, just listen a minute, uh, if you will. I've got a little story to tell you. Well, it's not so little. It's sort of a tall tale. It's about the pride of Company 40. Mose was his name, a fireman and a legendary hero of firemen. They say old Mose had feet like East River barges. His beaver hat measured two feet from crown to brim. And his fireman's helmet was about the size of a pup tent. (laughs) Yes, Mose was big and he was strong. And in addition, he had the speed of a panther. Mose was always the first to reach the scene of a fire, and it seemed that no rescue was impossible for him to execute. He could climb buildings using the windows for a ladder, jump over alleys like a cat, tear through walls with his bare fists, blow a path through smoke using his lungs like a bellows, and when he'd come across a small one-room fire, he'd close the doors and windows and inhale, (laughs) and the fire would be smothered from lack of oxygen. Oh, he was quite a man, old Mose. And when Mose wasn't fighting fires, he was the terror of the east side toughies and the plug uglies. Mose just naturally didn't like bullies and lawbreakers. And he'd fight them singly or in groups of any size. If the occasion called for it, he'd rip a tree out of the ground and use it like a policeman's nightstick. (laughs) Yes, sir, the lawless element gave old Mose a wide berth, you bet. But Mose was a bashful sort of feller. And when public admiration got too strong for him in New York and... Folks got to send in false alarms just to see him. Why, he just faded out of sight. Later, people in Illinois swore they saw him put out the Chicago fire in 1871. And Californians credit him with countless rescues and the final smothering of the San Francisco fire of 1906. Yes, sir. Stories about old Mose, the pride of Company 40, are easy to believe, aren't they? (laughs) 
say. Isn't it nice being citizens of a country where you can laugh and talk about things free as a breeze? And write and read and worship, too. Yes, sir. Maybe you don't think about it much, but you should. Yeah, 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 it does. It sure does, Kitty. What are you thinking so hard about? What? Oh, uh, uh, Bruno Thayer, Kitty. Huh. Yeah, he's been out on the old Jenks place two weeks now. Maybe I ought to ride out there and see how he's doing. Why? Well, everybody else in Dodge has, judging by the number of wild stories going around. He murders travelers and buries them in his garden. He conjures up evil spirits. He calls the coyotes to counsel with him in the middle of the night. All kinds of crazy stories like this. Well, I'm not so sure it's all crazy, oh, Matt. Oh, Kitty, will you... Look, three different friends of mine swear they've ridden by and heard Bruno talking to something. But there was nothing there to talk to. Sure there was. What? His dog. Come on, let's get some dinner. Uh, hurry up, Doc. Come on, hurry up. I'm coming. Uh, what happened? It's Hazel Perkins. They found her out south of town, scared half out of her wits. Uh, oh, Doc, he was right over me. Uh, oh, uh, now, all right, Hazel. All right. Oh, Just calm down now. Yeah. You're all right. Who was it, Miss Perkins? Was it that Bruno? Yes, yes, that's who it was. Oh, now, she's in no condition to talk now, Frisbee. Oh, I ran, but he came after me, and he chased me, Doc. Oh, no. Doc, what are those gashes on her arm? Well, I don't know, yes, Sam. Looks like some animal claw there. You mean some half animal, don't you, Doc? Now, Frisbee, you're a fool. Get out of the way. Oh, no, no. Come along, Hazel. Right at you. Fool, am I? Maybe I'm just fool enough to believe that the women folks ought to be protected. I say it's time something was done. I say we got to stop that ugly brute and stop him for good. Like they used to do in the old country. Yeah, well, but how do, you, how do you mean, Frisbee? My grandpappy knew. He told me when a hateful, unnatural monster like Bruno was found, they burned it. And they took what was left and drove an oak stake through it. Then they were safe. And not before. Well, I never heard of that. Seems to me the marshal... The marshal had his chance. My chance to do what, Frisbee? It was you let that critter loose on us, Marshal. What happened to Hazel Perkins is your fault. Hazel Perkins? Bruno grabbed her, Marshal. She's all bit up and scared half to death. Where is she? She's up in Doc's office. What are you aiming to do, Marshal? I'm aiming to find out what really happened, Frisbee. We've had about enough talk. We want action. Just one more word out of you, and I'll give you more action than you can handle. After I've talked to Hazel, if Bruno Thayer needs bringing in, I'll go get him, and I'll bring him in. But I'll do it without you or anybody else. You better hurry. You sure better hurry. Foster came from Alabama, and Al Jolson was always Alabama bound. Even though there was no particular validity to these claims, there was a definite sincerity behind them. For Bama has a sense of charm and hospitality unlike any other state. Maybe Stephen Foster didn't come from Alabama, but Helen Keller did. And so did a lone wolf train robber named Rube Burrow. And what if Jolson didn't go there? George Washington Carver did. And his experiments at Tuskegee brought international fame to him and the state. For all the deep radical changes experienced by the cotton state, some things never seem to change. 
Each spring, the fields and roadsides are carpeted with primroses. Green fields turn pale pink and roll wave-like in the wind. Alabama, like much of the South, seeks to combine 20th century industrial progress with the barn raisings and candy pulls of an earlier era. And what is more, Alabama succeeds. Hand me that bottle, will you, man? Yeah, sure, sure, sir. Ah, yeah, I just, just hold still now, you know. Oh. Ah. oh, well, that stings a little, doesn't it? But it's better than getting blood poisoning. Now, uh, Hazel, I know you're still upset, but uh, try to think clearly this time, huh? Now, just once more. Before you saw Bruno, what happened? Oh, well, my, my horse shied and threw me. What did your horse shy from? I don't know. But, but the next thing I remember is that hideous face bending over me. And then what? He grabbed me. And I felt his long nail sink into my arm. This arm here where these scratches start? Well, yes, of course. And then? Well, then he, uh, he began to laugh. To laugh? That's right. Oh, it was dreadful. Just dreadful. I, I tried to fight him off, Marshal, but he was terrible strong. And well, Hazel, why didn't Bruno laugh the last time? Well, well, what do you mean, Dr. Adams? Well, I mean that every time you tell this story, it, it gets better. You figure you're pretty important because you've been chased by Bruno Thayer. I think you're beginning to enjoy it. Enjoy it? Yes, enjoy it. Sure, he's ugly, and perhaps you were shocked by his face, but... You're not entitled to tell lies about him to be sopped up by some of the fools in this town. Oh, Doc, I... These scratches were made by a dog or a coyote or maybe a wolf. What? But not by a man. And the only reason that animal didn't kill you is because somebody killed it first. Oh, Bruno we... saved your life, didn't he? Didn't he? Oh, yes. Yes, he did. The, the, the wolf that made my horse shy when came after me and well, Bruno killed it. But well, he scared me half to death, Doc, with that face, that, that horrible face. And, well, I, I didn't mean to. Marshal, Marshal. Yeah, what is it, Sam? Frisbee and some others just left the Long Branch to get Bruno. I sent Chester after your horse. Oh, thanks, Sam. You know, they was talking wild, Marshal. They're going to kill him, sure. Oh, kill him? Oh, I didn't realize, Marshal. I, I'm sorry. It's not me you owe an apology to, Hazel. Oh, Bruno, I, I, I couldn't. But I'm sorry. I, I am sorry. Well, that's what I'll tell him, Hazel, if I get there in time. in his shack. We got him trapped now, just like we wanted. We'll spread out and circle him. Watch me. We'll close in on my signal. We're just saving you some trouble, Marshal. What are you planning to do with that wood stake, Frisbee? I'm going to nail down a monster with it, that's what. All right, Frisbee. Don't you try to get up or I'll splinter this piece of oak across your skull. Now, the rest of you men, get back on your horses. And don't stop in Dodge City. If I see any one of you there again, I'll lock you up. Now, move! Chester. Yes, sir? You hold Frisbee right here. If he makes a move, you kill him. Yes, sir. Bruno. Matt Dillon. Can I come in? Sure. You saw those men out there, huh? I saw them. You 
remember that they were out here to get you, didn't you? I figured somebody would be coming out here. That girl got pretty scared of me. But there wasn't anybody else around to help her. Aren't you even going to defend yourself? I hadn't decided, Marshal. I saw what you did to them, though. I'm grateful. You're grateful? For what? Well, for the... It... For saving your life? Yeah. Yeah, for saving my life. Well, it looks like you really wanted to live after all, doesn't it? Yeah, I guess it does. Uh, Hazel Perkins has to tell you that she's awful sorry for the way she acted. Oh? Yeah. Well, I'll see you. Oh, uh, here, here's a nice piece of oak wood for you. Make yourself a hat rack, huh? I think you'll be having some friendly callers one of these days. So long, Marshal. So long, Bruno. and directed by Norman MacDonald stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The script was specially written for Gunsmoke by Les Crutchfield with editorial supervision by John Meston. The music was composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns were by Ray Kemper and Bill James. Featured in the cast were Parley Bear as Chester, Howard McNear as Doc, and Georgia Ellis as Kitty. George Walsh speaking. Join us again next week for another specially transcribed story on Gun Smoke. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. been listening to the OTR Gold Network. Find more classic radio at otrgold.com.